Jim Rogers, how are you? I'm delighted, Andy. I'm delighted to be here. It's good to see you. It's really good to see you. Um, I really want to dive right into it and see what your views or if your views have changed that we could be or should be entering a recession just from the bubbles that have been created as well as just the time. What are you, have your thoughts changed on that? Well, Andy, a couple of simple facts. It's been since 2009 that we had a serious problem in the US, in the world, especially the U.S. That's the longest in American history. Now, it may be the last 100 years this time, maybe. You know, maybe the people in Washington are right when they say, oh, we've solved the problems. Well, I've never believed a word they say, and I know they've never solved the problem, so I doubt it. But it has lasted the longest in American history. I don't see, I see some signs developing. And we're going to have economic problems on the horizon, but I am not selling short yet because I don't see anything that has quite popped the bubble yet. So my guess, my short answer is things are okay for the moment, but be word a year or two from now. Got it. Let's not talk about, got it. Let's talk about the Fed because the Fed seems like they're really going into hyperdrive and printing a lot of money or they have done that recently. Is the Fed somewhat in, trapped in a box, would you say? Or prob probably I would also add to that almost all central banks in the sense of they can't really lower interest rates because that will ignite inflation or keep inflation going. And they can't really raise interest rates anymore because things will break. What are your thoughts on where the Fed is at? Well, I've been observing and read enough over the years to know that most central bankers do not know what they're doing. We've had occasional good central banks, even a couple of great central bankers in the last hundred years, but very, very few. So I certainly pay attention to them because they have so much money that they can have an influence, not just America, I mean, Tokyo, everywhere. So you have to, have to pay attention to what they say and what they do. But... I mean, I read the same newspapers you do. There's been a lot of money printed in the last several years. It has been going into markets. It has started leading to inflation. It, history shows that money printing always leads to inflation eventually. We're starting to see that now. We're going to see more. And as we see more, interest rates will go higher and the bubble will come to an end, how the market will come to an end. It's pretty simple. That's the way it's always worked. The hard part is knowing, okay, smart guy, when? Hey, you could tell us it's going to happen someday. Well, it is. But when is someday? We don't care about anything except when. And I don't know. We should watch you, Andy, to find out when. I don't think I'm that smart. They never ring the bill at the top, do they? Um, this has direct really implications in gold and silver. I know that you've been on record as I have um, about owning physical gold and physical silver. And interestingly enough, in the past, um, past probably two to three months, it's actually been you know, gold and silver have been going up more since then, um, but it's really broken out both gold and specifically silver. Are you still accumulating silver here? And what are your thoughts on, I mean, gold and silver? And what are your thoughts on gold and silver right now at well, the moment? Well, just to clarify, so everybody knows what we're saying, gold is at an all-time high. Gold has never been this high in world recorded history. But silver's still down 50% from its all-time high. So if I were buying one today, I would buy silver. I'm not buying either of them in any serious way at the moment, certainly not gold at all time highs. But if I were buying one, I would buy silver. And in fact, maybe you've reminded me I should go buy a little silver today because it is still very cheap on a historic basis. You got it. Both, it, both have a decent future, especially silver. Got it. And even with gold at all time highs, you'd still be optimistic about it in light of all of the uh, money printing that the Fed has done. I have a lot of gold. I am not selling any gold. No. Got to know that means I'm optimistic. 
but I'm not, I'm certainly not selling and I'm certainly not selling it short. Got it. And I know that you're quite the uh, value investor. I don't know if that's the right word, but you like to buy things that are very, very cheap. What right now or what specific commodity would you say that you'd be interested in as far as because of the relative price? And then what other assets do you find that are of good value right now? Well, when I look at commodities, I usually try to start by just getting out a list and seeing what's down the most. Uh, and that's at least where I'll start looking because maybe. It's a good place to start. Not, <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe if something's down the most, it might be time to buy it. I don't know. I certainly made many mistakes in my life. But agriculture's not overpriced. You know, some agriculture prices are very cheap, even on a historic basis. So I guess if I were looking at something to buy today, I would buy agriculture and I would probably buy a basket. These days, it's easy to buy baskets of anything, stocks, bonds, currencies, commodities, anything. And basket investing or index investing, call it what you will, is certainly more efficient and better for most investors than trying to pick the exact spot. Got it. And I'm, yeah. and I'm, la and I'm lazy. Index <laughs> investing is great for lazy people like me. You and me both. Um, specific, I'm very interested in agriculture because obviously the price, but also do you, what do you, what's your view on demand in the world? If you get the supply and demand uh, equation. Well, we all know that the world population continues to rise, maybe not as rapidly these days as before. Some countries are even having demographic problems. I mean, Japan. Japan's population has been declining for 15 years. That is not a typo. Japan has had a declining population for 15 years. So population isn't booming everywhere. But on the whole, population continues to grow. People do continue to have babies, more in some countries than ever. So as long as that's going to continue, supply and demand for agriculture will continue to have imbalances in the future. I don't know if you know how to drive a tractor, Andy, but maybe you should learn. I'll uh, give my kids on that. How's that? Well, um, there have ahead. been times in history, and you go back and you, I mean, you read old Russian novels, for instance. Nobody was richer than the big agricultural owners and farmers, I mean, not just in Russia, 100, 200 years ago, throughout the world. So there have been many times in world history when you could not be richer than being a farmer. Yeah, it's really true. Um, let's talk about regions and jurisdictions here. Um, I know that China, there's, I guess, evidence that it's slowing down, if you would, over the last several months. It's not year. Um, are you still really bullish on China and really the rest of Asia? Specifically, I'm interested in China, and, but also specifically India. India seems interesting to me, but it it's ran away a lot in the last year. But then also it seems like it has some bureaucratical problems or issues, as well as some uh, infrastructure issues. Just wanted to know what your comments or thoughts were on those two. Well, I want you to know, that India's always had bureaucratic problems, if you ask me. You know, the Eng Indians learned bureaucracy from the English and then took it to a higher plane. Still, the Indians are good at that. Uh, Indian bureaucracy is mind-boggling, always has been. Now, I will say, though, having said that, the government in Delhi seems to have been learning in the past few years. Um, they understand what needs to be done, at least they say they do, and they're doing some of the right things. So I am, I don't own any Indian shares because I missed it, but I am more optimistic about India probably than I ever been in my investing lifetime. So don't give up on India. Uh, having said that, yes, I am optimistic about China, but uh, don't get me wrong when, when I 
I am optimistic about China just as I was optimistic about America a hundred years ago or something. You know, not things don't go up every day or every year even. When you're optimi- when I'm optimistic about a country, I'm talking about a big long-term future. I expect China to be an extremely important, if not the most important country in the 21st century. Does not mean there won't be bear markets. America was the most important country in the 20th century. Oh my gosh, we had problems along the way, plenty of problems along the way. But if you owned American shares, you were very happy at the end of the century, despite some horrible bear market. So that's my view of China. China has problems now. They got hit by the virus. They got hit by a gigantic property bubble, which they tried to stop, but it finally popped for some reason. So China has a big property hangover now, and it takes a while for a property hangover like that to recover. I mean, this is not the first time the world has seen huge property bubbles anywhere, including in China. Sure, got it. So I guess that really leads me to if you're looking for value, is there really any value out there right now? Because it seems like everything is just really at historical highs. Um, again, we've had it sell off in, the, in China, um, but just Pretty much everything that I can see is really, again, at historical size, it's maybe the exception of agriculture, maybe maybe energy, maybe oil. Um, yeah, do you see any value anywhere for investors really to look at or consider? Well, you make a good point. As I look around the world, the only stock market that is on, uh, that is maybe cheap is China. I am looking at China. I haven't found anything recently, partly because I'm lazy, but China is, for me, a place to look. Most of the market, I mean, Japan, America, everything's at all-time highs. Doesn't mean they won't go higher, but buying at an all-time high is not as good as buying at something that's down 50% normally, normally. So I would prefer to look at China than most places. Yes, Uzbekistan is a great new emerging market, but, you know, most people couldn't find Uzbekistan on a map. So I don't encourage people to invest in places they know nothing about. But other than Uzbekistan and China, and yeah, I don't see, and agriculture, I don't see any markets that are down right now that are possibly cheap. Maybe you know some. But if you know some, don't announce it. Send me an email. Yeah, I mean, that will be between uh, me and you. But no, I, I don't really, really see the... Um, relatively speaking, uh, talking about again different regions here, it seems like it seems like all of these central banks are going to hyperdrive of, of printing money. Do you think this is going to um, ignite a currency war? Like, so for example, the Bank of Japan uh, printing like there's no tomorrow. Uh, the U.S. government, um, the the Fed printing like there's no tomorrow. It just I think it was just this past week the uh, the EU. Um, announced that they're going to start, I don't want to say they start easing, but they're not going to tighten. And it seems to me like we're just really on the brink of a currency war here. What are your thoughts on that? Do you like any currencies um, really other than, yeah, one over the other? Well, the words you just stated have always led to currency, inflate, first of all, inflation, second of all, in, in currency wars. Now, just because it's always happened doesn't mean it's going to happen again, but it, it always does. So, yes, I would be worried. Uh, I happen to own a lot of U.S. dollars at the moment. Now, the U.S. dollar is a terribly flawed currency, Andy. We in the U.S. are the largest debtor nation in world history and getting worse every week. So next you should say, well, why do you own U.S. dollars? I own them because when there are problems, People always look for a safe haven. History makes us makes most people think that the dollar is a safe haven. So when problems arise, I expect the U.S. dollar to go higher as people poke into the safe haven. It will then get overpriced, and I hope I'm smart enough to sell it if that happens. But Andy, the problem I have, and it's a big problem, I don't know where to put it then. 
I don't see any other currency in the world right now that is even semi-attractive. So the problem I have is, okay, if you sell your dollars, then what do you do? And I don't know. I wish right. I do. I look every day. Yeah, I really don't know either. Um, as we are wrapping up here, do you have any really final thoughts, final pieces of advice for somebody, uh, somebody like me, I guess, that is going through these really confusing and, and really difficult times here? Um, and difficult in the sense of we don't really don't, there's not any, nothing really clear. What would you recommend or what would you do? Or what, yeah, in my position. Well, Andy, I've been investing a long time. And many of those years, I've been confused and lost and, and perplexed and having no idea what to do many times. So I know exactly where you are, having been there myself. Now, I just explained I own U.S. dollars, but if and when, if and when I have to sell them because they go up a lot or for whatever reason, I have the problem. I am perplexed and confused like you described yourself. I don't know where to put the money. Uh, I don't see, I don't see a currency on the horizon or even many assets. Yes, I can buy a lot of wheat or something perhaps, but that's not going to be that sustainable in the long term when, when we talk about putting money into a currency or into a country. And the problem I have is I don't see one right now. Maybe it's there. I mean, the Japanese market was down for 35 years, but now it's making all time us. The Japanese currency is a disaster, will be. I mean, has been in is going to continue to be, if you ask me. So I don't, I don't know. I am looking. Uh, yes, agriculture is cheap on a historic basis. Some countries, perhaps, are cheap on a historic basis. I mean, Russia's cheap. And Andy, you and I are not going to invest in Russia. We're not allowed to invest in not Russia. Allowed. Yeah, not right now with the war going on. So. This is, a, as you put it very properly, these are perplexing times, confusing times. Um, and I don't know, I have dollars right now, even though it's a horribly flawed currency. And I explained why I own U.S. dollars. But when I have to sell them, I don't know. Most of the time in my life, I've had somewhere else I could go or a special reason, if nothing else, at the moment, I don't see a place. Maybe, you know, maybe the Australian dollar, I mean, just to pick a name, I'd, I mean, that's not, I'm not going there, but there, maybe there are places like that. I just don't see them right now. If you know it, please tell us all. I'll send you an email. By all <laughs> means. Yeah. Send me a, a letter. I don't care how it gets here. Yes, yes, yes. Well, Jim, Still have postages. All right. Well, Jim, uh, thank you so much for your thoughts, just carving out a little bit of time for me. I do really appreciate it. And uh, I'll link to, uh, I still check out uh, jimrogers.com, uh, The Millennial uh, Adventure. And uh, your book is, uh, I've made my kids both, uh, well, I have five kids, but my two oldest to read your book, The Investment Bike, because it really uh, inspired me and sent me on my, my path that I'm on right now. So thank you for that. Well, thank you. I'm delighted you like it. I will tell you that I had this long-term desire to go around the world on a motorcycle, which was some people thought was very strange and weird. And what's wrong? I remember one time I was telling a guy what I was going to do, and he said, well, why don't you fly? You've got enough money to fly around the world. <laughs> and I mean, some people just don't get it at all. So if you go around the world, you could go in a car, a motorcycle, or you can fly. Uh, I prefer seeing the world from the ground up. Well, if I can briefly, let me tell you a story about that. I read that book and then I went to um, study in Europe right when the everything fell. And my stepbrother and I, we were backpacking Europe. We would just with the Yankee smokes and a few dollars in our pocket. <laughs> and we would stop by every country 
and we had evaluated if we had invest there like Jim Rogers. That's what we would do. <laughs> right. So, so that's for you. Okay. I, I thank you for that. If you find something, please send me an email. Okay. <laughs> I am looking, but most many countries these days have already been exploited. As I said before, we've had a bull market in the United States since 2009, and that spilled over into most countries in the world, fortunately or unfortunately. So, yeah, I'm in a bind. We're all in a bind. We're all. Well, in I'm in a bind. I don't know about others. <laughs> I'm in a bind. I'm in a bind too. Well, thank you so much for your time, Jim. You've been very gracious. So hope to see you on the road. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you're with your half with your stepbrother too. Thank <laughs> absolutely. you. Absolutely. Take care.